Hey everyone, this is Mike from FastGen and today I would like to talk about variables within FastGen. So if you're using FastGen, you have to use variables a lot. And uh, I built a very simple example API where we get a zip code in the body of a request. And then we want to see, is this zip code available for delivery? And what we do is pretty easy right here. We basically get the zip code from the body. Then we define it as a variable. Then we check the database where we have a list of all the zip codes that are available and get a result true or false from the database. Then I'll just show you what it looks like in custom code and how you access variables in there. And then afterwards, we have an if condition that says, is the zip code available based on the database result? If yes, then say delivery is available. If not, say delivery is not available. And all of that is just to show you how to access specific variables and specific values while you're using FastGen. So let's actually take a quick look into debug mode. Here we go. This is the body content. We put zip 10001 in here and we can test it. Seems like it's going through. Apparently this zip code is available for delivery, but let's go through it step by step. So as a very first thing, what we do is accessing the body and how that works is we use curly brackets, then we use dollar body dot zip and we close it with double curly brackets as well. And you don't have to necessarily fully write that out. You can also use this insert variable button and then you can uh, choose body and you can press zip. And then now we have a variable that we defined within fashion that's called zip underscore code that gets its value from uh, the body parameters. And now how does it work within SQL? Um, very similarly. So if you write SQL and want to check something in the database, in this case, we check is this delivery, uh, is this zip code in the database or not? Uh, you use the same notation. Again, double curly brackets, dollar. In this case, we're not using body anymore. We're using this variable that we just defined. So how does this work? We use dollar, var, dot, and then we use the name of the variable afterwards to access its value. So as you see, how it usually works is you say dollar, then you say what you want to access. Is it a variable? Is it the body parameter? Is it like the header, for example? And then you go deeper with the dot notation. So you say dot, in this case, zip underscore code. And what's cool about variables specifically is also you don't have to type this out at all because we have a list of all the variables that you have defined in here. So you can just click on this and you can insert it. You can save the changes. There we go. And um, the only place where variables work a bit differently is in the custom code action. So um, <laughs> this is just for show because I wanted to show you what it looks like in the custom code action. So if you go into the custom code action, on the left side, you always have the context data. That is the data that you used in debug mode or that's coming from like a, a real life call. But basically you see here's like a couple of different things. And uh, one of those is the body parameter, but one of those is also the variable. And here we want to access this variable, but as you see, we don't have curly brackets in here. What we use here is context. So what you do if you want to access something from the context data here is you say context dot, and then you use the dollar notation again. Then you just say dollar var dot zip underscore code. We can test this real quick um, and we see this returns the correct value. So custom code, um, you use the context instead of the curly brackets. And uh, let's go to the next one. And this time we want to access a value that is returned by our database query. So how do we access this return from the database query? What it usually looks like if you're not getting a return from a variable, but from another action block, you use the dollar action as like the primary, uh, like the, the starting point of the notation. And in this case, we want to go a bit deeper because we want to understand is it true or false? Like, is this specific um, zip code in the database or not? So we can look at the result here. We see dollar action, which is what I just said. Like, dollar action is basically the prefix of most of the action blocks that we have. And then this is the name of this specific action block, minus the question marks. So it's dollar action dot is zip minus code minus available. And then if we want to go deeper, we use the dot notation. So we say available dot. And then we want to go to results, so dot result. Um, then we want to access, this is an array, this is a square bracket. So we want to say the first value within this array. So we say dot zero, because we start counting at zero. And then we have to say dot zero and then dot is underscore exists to access this true or 
If it's a different zip code that isn't in the database, this would say false. And this is exactly what we do right here. We have uh, curly brackets, dollar action, dot, is zip code available, dot, results. Uh, please be aware this is like capitalized in this case, dot, zero to access the array, dot, is exist. And then we check is it true or is it not true. And then lastly, we say this zip code is available for delivery or in this case, not available for delivery. So let's look. Um, and here, this zip code is available for delivery. Let's use a different one. Um, this one is not available for delivery. Um, so that is the basics of how you access variables within Fastgen. You can also access like some other variables. Let me give you one other example. Let's say, I don't know, item. And then um, I'll use a comma here real quick. Uh, you can insert, for example, a query parameter if you want to test it with, uh, with a query parameter. And then what you do right here, query.item, and what you can do in here, you can set different things. You can set authentication, you can set headers, but you can also set query parameters. I think I said item. And let's say the item is banana. And let's save this. And then let's this go to the correct side again. There we go. So item banana, in this case, <laughs> is the, the query <laughs> parameter. So basically, there's a couple of other things that you can access. Um, you can access all these action blocks, uh, so everything that you like defined. Um, you can access the body, you can access variables, the header, query, path parameters, user environment variables. So if you want an overview of like things you can access, just click on this. And if you want to dive even deeper than that, the documentation is at docs.fashion.com. I hope that was helpful to understand how variables work within Fashion how, and how we try to make it easier for you to access the right variables at the right time. As always, if you have any questions, reach out to us and happy building.